find what the center of mass is and we use this version of it, the summation version, to find the center of mass of a conglomerate object, it was something like this. You had another rod, then you had something else, and then you had another rod. So this case illustrates a, a case where you have several sets of things, maybe they're glued together, and each one by itself is a uniform object. So you know that its center of mass is at, is at its center. You know that the center of mass of this is at its center because it is a uniform object. You know that the center of mass of this is at its center. You know that the center of mass of the, this rod is at its center. And we could add other stuff to it that we want and uh, find a center of mass of this. Other types of situations where this kind of problem are involved are such objects like this. You can have something like this. Let's say a rectangular looking object. Let's say I wanted to know the center of mass of that. Okay, So how would I do a problem like that? Well, this one would have an x center of mass and a y center of mass, right? So what I would do, since it's a uniform object, I wouldn't need an integration. So essentially this kind of thing, I would, piece, uh, I would break it up into certain pieces. Let's say this piece, OK? And that would be my first piece. And its center of mass is at its center, right? Then you would have another piece. And the th uh, second piece can be either this little piece or it could be this whole thing. So let's say I make it this whole thing. So its center of mass is right there. And then the, my third piece is right here. So I have x1, y1, the coordinates of my first object. Here is the coordinates of my second object, x2, y2. And here's the coordinates of my third object, x3, y3. And then I would take the sum of the mass of this guy times the uh, its x component, right? Plus the mass of this guy times its x component plus the mass of that guy times its x component. So again, it would be a same, a same kind of case where I'm using this version of the equation, the summation version, OK? I'm not integrating. So both of these kind of things go in that category. Now the integral one, so that's what I want to do today. I want to start with. Uh, a couple examples of the integral one, and then with that we're going to end chapter 9, and then we're going to start chapter 10, the rotation. So when I start chapter 10, then I'm going to have, I'm going to talk about rotational kinematics, then I'm going to go into rotational dynamics, and then the rest of the day we'll finish, uh, we'll do moment of inertia. As you, as I told you before, moment of inertia is the big portion of the the beginning portion of chapter 10. So you have to understand what moment of inertia is and what is the purpose of moment of inertia, what is the definition, how to find moment of inertia. So we'll spend quite a bit of time on moment of inertia. So let's do this one first, the integration one. So this one is used in cases such as this. Let's say I have a rod. Let's begin with a rod. Uniform mass. Uniform mass, uniform density, I should say uniform mass density. Uniform mass density. So you have a rod. And I want to find its center of mass. Well, of course, we know that it's going to be at its center, right? It's going to be exactly at half its length. But how do we prove that using the definition of center of mass? So that's what we'll start with. We'll put the x and y axis here at the left side. Then what we'll do is we'll take a little piece of the element of the rod whose thickness is dx. Okay, 
And then we'll say that dx has a certain mass, right? Depending on the mass density of the rod. So then we're going to define something known as the linear mass density lambda. Linear mass density. And we're defining this as dm over dx. So the linear mass density is something that tells you how much mass is concentrated in a certain unit length of the rod. So its units would be kilogram per meter, or if you're in British unit system, it would be slugs per feet, or any other units of mass over length, gram per centimeter, kilogram per meter, or anything like that. So it's dm over dx. OK, therefore, then I apply the, the definition of center of mass. I say x center, uh, x center of mass is equal to x dm over integral dm. OK, and then here, x basically is the distance from that little piece to my xy coordinate axis. That's my x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm saying that x times the mass of that little piece, dm, but dm is equal to what? Lambda dx, by, by my definition, right? Lambda dx divided by dm is lambda dx. So you have integral x lambda dx over integral lambda dx. And here's what, where I'm going to use the fact that if it's a uniform mass density, that means it's made of the same material all throughout. So it could be all wood, it could be all metal, it could be all the same material. So lambda comes out of the integral, lambda comes out of the integral, and it cancels if it is uniform. So you're left with <coughs> integral x dx over integral dx from 0 to L, 0 to L. Okay, and then if I integrate that, what are you going to get? x squared over 2, 0 to L, divided by x from 0 to L. And then you're going to integrate this, uh, you're going to get what? L squared over 2 over L, that's it, just L, right? And then you're going to get what here? L, L cancel, L over 2, which is what the obvious, right? So if, it's, if you have a uniform rod, the center of mass of that rod should be at its middle, OK? Now